boss. What are they stopping for? That's a good question. They sure don't like the sound of this. For what? I said we'd push straight through. Well, Mr. Wishbone doesn't like to sign that axle, Mr. Paver. What's wrong? It don't squeak right. I got another night I can put in. Not till we reach Gila Flex. I can't stop the drive now. Mr. Favor, you are in charge of those knot-headed cows, but I am in charge of these wagons. And I don't mean to break down out here in the middle of nowhere, because if I break an axle, I'll probably break a wheel, and I don't have a spare. Now, get me something to prop this thing up with. In nightfall before they can get going. More than likely. Those Comanches come in, they won't have a chance. Those Comanches come back and we're still here. Most likely none of us will have a chance. Get back to the herd. Well, I ain't gonna get back to the herd till Wish gets this wagon rolling. <laughs> Go on, Rowdy, go on. I got a funny way of looking at things. I never seen a cow yet that was worth a man's life. Mushy, get me some wire up front there. Maybe I can wire this axle so it'll hold together till Keel Flats. We'll catch up with you. See that you do. Mr. Favor sure is upset. Just get the wire. Oh, yes, sir. What did you back down from him for? Somebody had to back down, and he's the boss. Anyway, he's right. He's right. He's not right. If you, what happens if you lose that wheel? Well, it's up to me to see I don't. Yeah, well, if you do, you're going to be a prime pelt on a Comanche lodgepole. Well, I'd mighty well rather a Comanche skin me than Mr. Favor. Oh, you sure are lucky that you're the ramrod. Anybody else cross him like that, and he'd kick him wall-eyed. Ramrod. <laughs> All that is a title with no duties. Ramrod's just some stupid boob that no one even listens to. Well, this stupid boob's getting sick of it. Help! Howdy. Huh? Help! You hear something? Was he riding that horse, Mr. Wishbone, or trying to get off of it? You got me. Hold it! I need a doctor! I need a doctor! Well, he's lost his mind, or I just have. You sure ain't much of a rider. Help! Right him in! Coming again. yelling for a doctor, but it looks like he's about all done in. Hand me that black goop and the spoon. Here, you hold up his head. What happened? Come on, mister. Take it easy. It's good for you. Good! 
One more ought to do it. Do what? Cure you. But I'm not sick. You are, too. You came in here yelling for a doctor. But not for me. What did you say? I said I don't need a doctor for me. I'm fine. Who are you, mister? Oh, I'm uh, Morris G. Stevens. I'm a philologist. I uh, study languages. Oh, what kind of languages? Indian, Pueblo, Comanche. You know, you would never believe this. It's fantastic. But do you know there are no Comanche dictionaries? Well, I'll be. So, uh, I came out here to compile one. What for? Oh, so people could uh, communicate with the tribesmen. Mr. Stevens, if you opened your mouth to speak to a Comanche, you'd have your throat slit before you got two words out. Well, maybe not if they understood the words. I think it's important for people to understand people. Well, I think you ought to practice what you preach. You came barreling in here hollering for a doctor, and now you say you're not sick. All right, who is sick? Oh, what's the matter with me? I wasn't even thinking. It's for Lame Bear. Lame Bear? The Comanche chief? Well, uh, not exactly for Lame Bear. It's for his son. Mr. Stevens, how in the name of all that is holy would you know that Lame Bear even had a son? The Pueblos told me. The Pueblos? Yeah, that's where I've been for the past couple of months, living with the Pueblos, uh, until they moved out. They moved out? Yeah. Uh, see, they didn't want to be caught in a fight between the Comanches and the whites. You see, Lame Bear's medicine man, he told Lame Bear to kill every white soldier and settler between here and the border if his son died. What the whites got to do with all this? I don't know. The Pueblos didn't know either. So, uh, well, I thought I'd go out looking for a doctor to take a look at the boy. So I headed for Gila Flats, and that's when I ran into the herd. Well, if this Comanche medicine man's got them all stirred up, we got about as much chance as a flea in a frying pan. Yeah, well, here's what I suggest. How's the actual wish? So wired, Mr. Fever. Yeah, well, here's what I suggest. You got room for him in the wagon? Yeah. I'll tell you, boss, uh, the Rogers Trail is only about uh, half a day's away from here. We could veer west and go over there, miss the Comanche country altogether. We're going north to Gila Flats. Let's move. suggest, Mr. Stevens? Huh? Oh, nothing. Just we head north for Gila Flats. Get up. Brothers over there? Yeah. I don't know what it feels like to be scalped. Well, I imagine it'd do smart some. Well, I just can't figure it out. What's that? Why, Mr. Favor didn't take the old Rogers Trail. It's not that far away. Well, I'm afraid that's my fault, Toothless. Why is that? I recommended it to him. Wonderful. What's that, Mr. Stevens? The air. Go on, take a deep breath. What do you smell? Cows. No, no, no. Well, cows, yes, but something else. You mean that dead polecat? You got a peculiar idea of what's wonderful. 
Mr. Wishbone, don't you smell the promise, the challenge? Nope. Just the polecat. Well, I do. I've never smelled it anywhere else before. Not in the East. Certainly not in Europe. You've been in Europe, Mr. Stephen? Uh, a few times. Traveling salesman? No. No, I was nothing. But one day I said to myself, Morris, if you want to make a success out of your life, you better start right now. So I came west. And I said to myself, where am I needed? What can I do that would be important? And the answer came to me like a flash from God. Indians. Communications. The last fellow I knew tried to communicate with the Comanche got his ears docked. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Wishbone. Did he try to communicate with words or with guns? Really, you fellas don't realize what a wonderful language Comanche is. Listen. Fluff, Hatch. Be jiggered. Come on, say it. Fluff, Hatch. Fluff, Ash. Well, Fluff, Ash to you, too. <laughs> that means happy days. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> Fluff, Ash to you, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> oh, Fluff. Oh, I know. It's a small thing. But think what it would mean to a Comanche. So tired, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Here, Mushy, you take them. Oh, oh please, uh, may I drive, Mr. Wishbone, please? Why? Oh, I don't know, so I could feel kind of useful. All right, just be careful you don't fall into any... Any chuck holes. What did I do? We must have broke a wheel. Or as we say in Comanche, flufach. Out of the wagon. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I, I was just driving along. I don't know what happened. Now, don't blame him. I warned you. Look at that wheel. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah. Yeah, the sun will be down in a couple hours. We might as well stop here. Gila can't be more than a mile off. Will you please tell me what's so important about Gila? There's an army detachment there. I'm going to ask for cavalry protection. You think the cavalry is going to ride along and nursemaid this bunch of cows? They might. We've done it before. We'll go in in the supply wagon and pick up a wheel. Oh, Mr. Stevens, you'll come with us too, please. Oh, oh, well. Oh, oh, fine, Mr. Paper. I'll be glad to help. No, thank you. Not to help. To stay. Uh, a stay in Gila? That's right. But aren't the Comanche villages still north of here? Uh-huh. Oh, well, then, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd rather stay with you. Mr. Stevens, I cannot be responsible for you. Please, if you don't mind, if I could just talk to these people. No, no, no. No? Roddy, you've been down the herd. I'm going into town for a wheel. Should be back in two, three hours. And triple the night watch. Can't let it end like this. Not after coming so far and getting so close. Yeah, bet him down. Move him out. Head him up. The guy's back riding drag again. There must be a way. I am riding. Mr. Yates, you've got to help me. Help you? All you have to do is make Mr. Favor understand how important this is to me. You want me to make Mr. Favor understand? Got to get to the Comanche villages somehow. Stevens, I can't even help myself. More or less some wet-eared phil... phil... Philologist. An idiot like yourself. Now get out of here and leave me alone, will you? But, uh, Mr. Yates...
evacuation. Probably army orders. See if you can pick up a wheel and pick us up here. All right, Morris. End of the line. Oh. <laughs> oh, I like that wild sense of humor. Friend, I haven't got enough troops to escort you across the street. But men are left in my detachment, we'll be falling back south to cover the evacuation. I suggest you do the same. If Lane Bear's son dies... It's... What's the matter with him? It's hard to say. Consumption, maybe. Why do they blame the whites? Well, because the government took him away from his tribe. Somebody with a bright idea. Nice little boy, too. Smart as a whip. Ten, eleven. Anyway, they told Lane Bear they'd give Gray Pony the education he deserved. Send him back a great, wise chief. And the medicine man said no. And the medicine man said no. He said the white men had kill him. But Lane Bear said he trusted the white men. So after about six months, a boy began to go downhill. Every doctor in Washington took a look at him. Nothing. So his father said that the boy was going to die. He'd like to have him die in his own tent. So they brought him back. Mr. Favor, why don't you have Mr. Wishbone take a look at him? Wishbone? Well, he has some strange herbs. Mister, there isn't anything in this world anybody can do. I don't believe that. Look, if I could just talk to this in Captain the... Ross, could you please arrange passage south for Mr. Stevens? Sure can. This wagon train's going out all night. Mr. Faber, why won't you let me help? Because I don't want to see your scalp hanging from some Comanche belt. Good luck, Morris. Good luck to you, too, Mr. Faber. Swing an east some. Ah. Well, we got one more chance to take the Rogers Trail. Now, why won't you take it? Rogers Trail is closed from Taylorville to the river with landslides. It's not closed. I just talked to a trapper who came out of there not two weeks ago. Yeah, well, uh, one lone trapper and 3,000 steers don't look at a trail exactly the same way. Will you at least let me ride over there, take a look for myself. Be a waste of time. Roger's trail is closed this time of the year. Least ways to a herd the size of ours. Now it's getting on to noon. You go tell Wishbone we'll take a break. Mushy, will you stop messing with that spoiled dough and throw it out? <laughs> Mr. Stevens. Golly, Mr. Stevens, I didn't know you was there. Oh, it, it's all right. Really, it's all right. Oh, Mr. Favor. Uh, did you get away from Ross? Well, when he was busy, I walked all the way back to the herd and I hid in the check wagon. Oh. Now, believe me, Mr. Favor, I know what I'm doing. If I could just establish contact with Lame Bear. Lame Bear? You lame brain! 
All right, all right. I give up. You go on out and you get yourself killed. I don't care, you hear? I wash my hands of you, you hear? Yes, I hear. Up, all right? Oh, as good as new. Too bad the Comanches didn't see that. They might have laughed themselves a bit. <laughs> I doubt that. Say, Mr. Stevens, uh, about yesterday, the way I climbed on you. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord. I had it coming. Must have sounded pretty silly. Me wanting to meet with the Comanches. Are they very far away from us now? Pretty near. That's what's got everybody so jumpy. Everybody except you, that is. Well. With me, it's a... ignorance is bliss. It can be a pretty touchy situation. You know, a war party like that could wipe out a crew like this in an hour. Maybe even less. You'd do things differently if you were trail boss, huh? Yeah, I sure would. Well, someday. It better be soon. I'm not ready to explode. Why? Yeah, I, being ramrod is kind of a funny job. I don't have too much pride in a job like this. Why don't you do something about it? I can tell you positively, Mr. Yates, there is no worse torture for a man than to have contempt for his own role in life. I can also tell you it's a problem that can be very easily solved. I know because uh, I solved mine. Well, you had problems? Well, you know Sereno de Bergerac. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a stubby little fellow. He used to be a head wrangler at the Clara Regal Ranch. Oh, no. No, this particular fella happened to be a Frenchman. Oh, one of them frog eaters. Frog eater, yeah. Well, anyway, Sereno is a man with two absolutely incompatible characteristics. He was a poet and he had a long nose. See, you smile. You couldn't help it. A long nose is just funny. But it wasn't funny to Sereno. Inside, he was a very handsome man. He was a poet. Well, I too happen to be like Sereno. I have a long nose. Oh, I, I don't mean this one. <laughs> I mean, I just happen to look comical. I make people laugh. <laughs> I don't know why. But inside, I'm a knight looking for a maiden to save. Do you know what would happen to me if I happen to have a duel with a villain? My pants would fall down. I'll bet they would that. No question about it. Yes, and I'll tell you something else. My family, actors, Shakespeare. Oh, those beautiful words. Looks it not like the king. Mark it, Horatio. It would be spoke. Bernardo, my debut. When I ended the stage, the lights got in my eyes. And I walked straight into the pit, fell headfirst into the bass drum. The audience laughed. They laughed. They never stopped laughing. But you stayed on the stage. No, no, I, I got a job in the circus. I was a clown. Oh, I always had a weakness for circuses. Maybe I saw your act somewhere. I wonder. It was very funny. I fell headfirst into a bass drum. No, I never caught that. <laughs> you would have laughed. 
Well, I, I did that act from Bombay to Boston, from Pittsburgh to Paris. And then one day, a strange thing happened to me. I began to feel afraid of dying. Oh, not dying exactly, but of being dead. I began to think, suppose at the end there was a book and the only word next to Morris G. Stevens was clown. Oh, that's when you quit, huh? Oh, this is when I started to study. Oh, I love languages. And I studied all about the Indian history, and I began to see, well, how much help they really needed. How much help, God willing, I might be able to provide. And then I quit. Mr. Yates, it was like growing six feet taller. Yeah, but it was. No, you know what I always wanted to do? What? I always wanted to be a surveyor. Wonderful. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to survey new trails and new countries. The best trails. The Yates trails. Yeah, well, maybe. I always had a little feeling towards pathfinding. I always could scout out a path like a dowser scouts out water. Well, why don't you do it? Something. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Well, well Mr. Yates, where are you going? Well, find a trail west of this Comanche country, that's why. Now? I'll be back before we move out. I'll prove the Rogers Trail's open, then I'm gonna quit this lousy job. But Mr. Yates! I didn't mean now. <laughs> Where is Senor Roddy going? Oh, uh, uh to overlook the herd, I guess. Oh. Say, uh, Jesus, uh, have you seen Mr. Favor around? He's not here. Senor Clay came back and said that there was something up ahead he should see. Straight up the trail? Si, Senor. Jesus, would you mind saddling a horse for me? Como no? Of course. Oh, gracias. Funny thing, though. Do you notice those tracks out in front? I'll burn them. Well, I couldn't make out more than three sets. Now, that's not much of a raiding party. Might be the boys still alive. A few of the young bucks jumped the gun. Yeah, maybe. What happened? Well, just what does it look like happened, Mr. Stevens? Comanches? Very good. That's right. You shouldn't be out on the trail alone, mister. There's no telling where they're going to hit next. Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I wanted to talk to Mr. Favor. You see, I might have been the inadvertent cause of... Oh, say, we'd better send somebody back to Gila. What I'm trying to say is... Oh, uh, you want me to go? No, no. I'll send Rowdy. Send Rowdy where? Back to tell Ross what's happened. Ross? What is the matter with you? Oh, me? Nothing. Look, Mr. Stevens, probably going to regret this, but I have to ask you to do something for me. Oh, yes, sir? Now, it's not complicated, but it is important. Yes, All right? Yes, sir. I want you to go back to the herd. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. 
I want you to go back to the herd and tell Rowdy what's happened here. And tell him that the boy may not be dead yet, but that he's probably close to it. And to catch Ross before he pulls out. All right? Mr. Favor. Do you think you can handle it, Mr. Stevens? Yes, sir. Yes, I think I can. Would you please hurry? Oh, yes, sir. Up the team. Stevens get here all right? Yeah, he told us all about the cabin and then lit out. Lit out? Lit out for where? To Gila. Gila? Yeah, he said you told him to warn Captain Ross. I told him to tell Rowdy to warn Ross. Oh, I thought it was kind of funny you'd send him off on a thing like that. Where is Rowdy? Search me. He's with the herd, I think, senor. I'll get him. No, no, wait a minute, Quince. Well, you should pick yourself up a horse and come with me. If we come across Stevens, you can bring him on back while I go to Gila. Quince, tell Rowdy to move the herd out. Right. And Quince, tell him to keep moving, whether we get back or not. I don't want to waste any more men. Understand? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I thought for a minute there might be Captain Ross. The army all gone? They sure have. And from the looks of things, I'd say they left in quite a hurry. Give you the telegraph. Dead. Now, that ought to be easy to fix. Look, I I'll go take a look at the wire. <laughs> Everything's all right. Great pony is still alive. Hello. How does that make everything great? Well, I told him Wishbone was a great white doctor, and I promised he'd save the boy. You told him what? It's the only chance or only way out. But what if that boy dies on me? What if something happens while I'm working on him? Well, then we die too. At the stake. But later. <laughs> Blue blazes you been anyway? Ah, chasing wild geese, I guess. What wild geese? I was trying to prove that the Rogers Trail was open. Well, did you? Nope. Landslides all the way from Taylorville to the river, just like he said. Like who said? Mr. Favor. I'll go tell him. Well, he ain't here. He ain't? Where is he? I don't know. Him and Wishbone, they took out after this Mr. Stevens. He told me to turn the herd over to you, but I couldn't find you anyplace. Besides, in 
Them Comanches, they've been hovering around us like a bunch of turkey buzzards. Yeah, well, how long have they been gone? Well, too long, Rowdy. You also said to keep this herd on the move and you weren't to go looking for him. Yeah. Well, I guess they'll be all right. Yeah. Chance in the world. Mr. Wishbone, isn't there something you can do? Some herbs you can give to him? No. Look at that medicine man. He knows it too. Lame bear. Oh, sir. A makato zipa. I speak your language. Yes, you do. Very well, very well. Can you save my son? Well, you can try, Lane Bear. That's all any man can do. To try and then to fail will not be good enough. Sign of them yet, huh? Nope. Well, I'll tell you something's wrong. We should have been here a long time ago. Roddy, maybe we should send out a few of the boys and... And if more go out to look for them and they get into trouble, and more follow and more, what happens to the herd? To blazes with the herd. Well, I'm going in. Oh, no, you ain't. No one is. Roddy, what's the matter with you? Somebody's got to go in there and help them. Not if it means sacrificing maybe 20 men for two, it don't. Now, look. We're moving this herd north, every last man. Don't argue with me. Listen, Rowdy, you talk about him and your ways, dogged if you ain't worse. How much longer you figure? A matter of minutes. Look at him. He's a brave little boy, not a sound. I can tell you, it's painting him some. There's nothing you can do to even help that. What a failure I've been. So much hope, so little accomplished. I traveled 2,000 miles to speak Comanche to a man who can speak English better than I can. Communicated with nothing to communicate. A giver with no gift. I'm truly sorry, Mr. Faber. Oh, everybody has to get to the end of the trail sometime, Mr. Stevens. I guess it don't matter much how you get there. no time to be fooling around. Isn't it, Mr. Wishbone? Isn't it? Mr. Faber, hand me a piece of charcoal there, will you? What are you after, Steve? Not much. One laugh from a little boy. Excuse me.
My son is dead. And that's it, old friend. What's the problem? Can't they figure out which one I was to burn first? He said we'd be set free. He said what? I think he said no war. Is that right, Lane Bear? No war? No war. But the boy died. The boy laughed. Each man dies in his time. But to give a gray pony this great gift, this laughter, deserves a gift in return. My gift is smaller than yours. Mine is life and peace. You are free. Continue on with us? Well, yes, as far as the stage junction. Oh, then where? Then back home. To the circus. I think I'll let someone else compile the dictionaries. There are other important jobs. You can only learn to recognize them. Like Ramrod, huh? <laughs> like Ramrod.
figure is Indians. They told me in town there was a Comanche raiding party around. Oh, they warned us to take the long trail through, through Antelope Valley. Well, Indians usually don't travel alone. When they do, they don't cause trouble. Well, what else could it be? I wasn't on anybody's land. What about you? You cause any trouble yourself in town? Well, not unless you call trouble getting stuck for a couple of tickets to a, a church lottery. You <laughs> bought tickets? Ladies caught me with money in my hands. You sure you don't know anybody around here? Well, I've been up this trail a time or two, but I never even saw the town before. Whoever was shooting at me sure wasn't taking any chances. He wanted me dead before he showed himself, and he darn near got his way. Beats me. Me too. It beats all of us. Maybe there's no answer to it. Well, let's just go back there and root him out. No, chances are it was a Comanche. And if there's a raiding party around here anywhere, like up ahead on the trail maybe, we'd better take that sheriff's advice. Antelope Valley? You want to scout ahead the bed ground? Well, I'd like to do a little scouting on my own. Make sure it was a Comanche. You can go back there? Yeah, try to track him down. Alone, you already shot at once. Only this time, I'll be expecting trouble. Yeah, that's all right. You go on ahead, Jim can do the scouting. You'll learn more with four eyes and two. No, thanks, Simon, but this is my game. Wish. Will you be able to find this tonight? Yeah, but I'll be back late. Best way to spot him is to watch for his night camp. Well, just find out who it is. Don't try to even any scores, huh? I'll be careful. Now, suppose the rest of us ought to get in the saddle. Check your ammunition, huh? Who's on night guard, anyway? Um, Simon and Cisco. I better go have a look. Peaceful? Quiet enough to put a man to sleep. If I sing tonight, it won't be to quiet him down. It'll be to keep me awake. You're looking for Jed, huh? Uh, just looking. Well, I'm watching him, too. He said he might be late. Well, keep your eyes open, will you? You mean for that sniper? Yeah, he could be around. Well, I've been a-watching. Don't you worry, Mr. Yates.
How you doing? You any help, Mr. Yates? No, I'll get his rifle, will you? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So you can move into camp. Hey, Roddy, who you got with you? Well, we're going to find out. Hey, he's wearing a badge. Yeah, where'd you get that? I've been wearing it the best part of my life. Are you trying to tell us you're a lawman? You can see the badge. Well, it's a federal badge, all right, and a real one. It don't necessarily mean it's his badge. It's my badge. If you're a federal law officer, why didn't you come on in? What are you doing sneaking around out there? I'm looking for someone. For who? He wouldn't be using his right name. Uh, maybe you have some sort of credentials on you you wouldn't mind showing? Anson Dixon, U.S. Marshal, 4th Federal District. Missouri. Well, sure, you are Marshal Dixon. Dixon? You're the one that cleaned the Pickett brothers out of Cedar City. That's right. Uh, and he's the one that hunted down Bill Claggett and shot it out with him in Abilene, too. Oh, well, Roddy, maybe we've been a little out of line. I mean, interfering with the U.S. Marshal on legal business. That's if his legal business includes shooting somebody. Mm -hmm. Is that fired? Sure has. Most of the cylinder. What were you shooting at, Marshal? The man I came after. I almost got him this morning. I missed him, but I picked up his trail. To here? To here. I figure he's one of your men. Yeah, I figure that too. Because you were shooting at one of my men today. Uh, my question is, why, huh? I told you why. He's the man I came after. Jed Colby? That's not his right name. What then? James Crothers. I got a warrant for him here, sworn out at Short Creek. Sure you get the right man? There's no mistake. You want to give me back my guns? If you wanted them so bad, how come you tried to shoot him? He's wanted dead or alive. It's easier to take a man dead. Under some circumstances. I'd rather take him alive, but he's dangerous. Jed? James Crothers. He's probably on his good behavior here. He's a good man. I ain't about to let him get shot in the back by a sniper, badge or no badge. Then maybe you'd like to help me take him without violence. I'd like to hear his side of the story first. Not sure he's the man you say he is. You either, for that matter. You haven't said where he went. Well, strangely enough, he's out looking for you. Then he'll be back. So I'll stay here. Yeah, that's good. I keep an eye on you that way. Simon, better get on back out there. Let me remind you all, if you warn him, you'll be violating the law. Where are you going? Uh, I've got a herd out there and night riders i got to check on. If that's any of your business, I'll come with you. No, you won't. Stay right here in the light where the boys can keep an eye on you. You don't want any sniping going on around this camp. Now, that badge of yours doesn't bother me too much, Dixon. It's my camp. We'll play it my way. <laughs> Two. Now, you stay here and keep an eye out in case, uh, in case I miss him. Don't let him go into camp without knowing, huh? All right.
Jed? Yeah, Rowdy? What are you doing out here? I thought it might have been you gunning for me. Nothing out there except a Comanche sign, but it's a day or two old. It beats me. Yeah, he's waiting for you. Who? Your man, he rode on in. And he followed me. Why didn't I think of that? And you've got him. Good. Uh, well, let me just say he's there. He's waiting for you. What do you mean? The marshal said he wants you. Me? What for? You're wanted for murder in Missouri. But your real name is James Crowther. Yeah, I used the name once. What's his name? Dixon. Hanson Dixon. And you know him, huh? Yeah, I know him. Come on, I want to see for sure. ago, he arrested me for murder. He figured I'd killed a man named Ed Carley, but I didn't. They didn't even bring it to trial because they proved I couldn't possibly have done it. I was cleared completely. What's he want you for now, then? You've heard of hanging judges. Well, Dixon's a hanging marshal. He prides himself on the men he's brought to the gallows. He wanted me there, but they released me. Only he never gives up. He said he didn't believe the evidence. Said he could bring out new evidence. Well, maybe he did, huh? He couldn't have. I don't know what he's cooked up. Whatever it is, I'm not guilty of murder. Well, I'll tell you, Judge, you're going to have to clear yourself. If I surrender to him now, I'd never get back to Missouri alive. Well, what are you going to do, run? I'm trying to explain to you why I have to. I'd see the day you'd even think about running. I've got to. Between Dixon and me, it's kill or be killed. And I don't want to kill him any more than I want him to kill me. Well, it's a temptation to me to take a shot at him right now. Jed. I'm sorry, Rowdy. I'd like to have stayed on with you. Hello, just a minute. What are you going to do, stop me? Hold me for him? No, I just want you to know what you're getting into. Once you start running, there ain't going to be any turning back. I know that, and I don't like it. But I've got no choice, or I would be a murderer. things I'd like to know about this man of yours you call Colby. You know, first, there's a few more things I'd like to know. What? More about the charge you have against him. You read the warrant? It's murder. Yeah. Who'd he kill? When? A boy named Ed Carley a couple of years ago. Mm. I heard he was clear of that charge. There's new evidence. Mm. What kind of evidence? That's not my business. I just make the arrest. He was out there, wasn't he? You warned him. Helped him to run. All right, mister, I warned you. You're under arrest for aiding the escape of a wanted criminal. And going into Short Creek to jail. You just gotta take somebody in, don't you, Dixon? 
Just drop your guns. Joe, you better drop yours. Unless you want a bag full of lead. No, Simon. He is wearing a star. Well, you're not going with him, are you? Well, I just do that. Find out how much authority he really has. You'll find out. Get moving. No, hold it. Not without an escort. I don't want you to make any mistakes with a gun. Jim, uh, you hold the herd here. We got grass and water enough for two days. Simon, you ride along with me and the marshal here. Huh? Well, Marshal Dixon, you get your man? Not the right one. But I want this man jailed for aiding a criminal to escape. He hasn't got a shred of evidence to prove that. Well, his word's good enough for me. Get down. We're going to see a judge. That'll take at least a week. Our judge is a circuit rider. Look, I've got a herd to take care of. That's not my problem. You better tell your men that they're in for a long wait. Well, we haven't got any time for a long wait. Grass is getting bad, and so is the water. And there's Indians out there. Nothing I can do about that. They'll have to take care of themselves. Now, get down. Once your boss out, maybe you better go get Jed Colby and bring him back. now, cowboy? That you're a marshal? Maybe so. But as far as Jed being a criminal, you'll have to prove that before I believe it. I don't have to prove anything to you, and I don't intend to. Well, you'll have to prove it to a court, and you couldn't do that two years ago. I will this time. I doubt it. I doubt if you'll even risk it. Think what you like. You want to tell me now where he went? I don't know. What direction? I have no idea. He told you nothing? Nothing, no. You didn't ask? No, I didn't ask. And he had no supplies. And he can't go far without them. You go over to that little valley. Toward the towns on the other side. I'll go that way after him, after I've had a little sleep. You need help, Marshal? I could raise a posse. No, I've done it alone so far. I don't need any help. You don't need any help to uh, shoot a man in the back. This Colby told you that, I guess. Maybe he didn't tell you that's the way he did the killing I want him for. Shot a man from behind. I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe, cowboy. I'll be at the hotel if you should get any news. All right, Marshal. No, you ain't. You're not helping yourself any. You're in enough trouble now. Tell me, Sheriff, it ever occurred to you that he might be wrong? Hanson Dixon? Uh-uh. He's one of the most respected marshals in the West. Don't you think it's uh, kind of unusual that he's come all the way out here from Missouri just to arrest one man? Well, it uh, may be not usual. Would the normal thing uh, be is to send word to you and have you pick him up? Well, if he was supposed to be here in town, maybe yes. But with the herds coming up, having to be watched, that would be something special. Well, still, I think he should be back there in Missouri attending to his duties. Well, maybe he could be on special assignment. Did you bother to ask him that? No. After all, he's Marshal Dixon. He must have authority for whatever he's doing. Just one more thing, Sheriff. Did he ever show you a wanted poster on this man, Crother? No. No, I can't say he has. Does that bother you? Look, Yates. I told you that whatever Marshal Dixon says is all right with me. I'm not the one who has to go after the man anyway. Well, but you are responsible for protecting the man's life. 
Are you trying to say that your man is in danger from Dixon? He tried to kill him once before. And maybe he had a reason. He's a marshal. After a criminal. And that's good enough reason for me. Anything you want that I can get? No, nothing. Oh, uh, you tell my drover out there and I'd talk to him. I'll send him in. thinking of the herd and what's best for him, that's all. Well, then he isn't thinking so good. Now, he never went off and left us anywhere. I'm not going off and leave him. Wish? You'd rather we go after Jed and bring him back? Well, no, that's not what I meant. Then what? Now, I told Roddy we'd come down and break him out. But he said no, it'd just make more trouble. He's right, Wish. They got no case against him. There's no call to hold him once Dixon leaves. Then I'm going to stay right here. Until Dixon leaves and Roddy's out. But the herd needs more grass, Wish. Well, they can do without for a day or two. They've had it too easy lately. Well, look who's here. Hey, what are you doing back here? Glad you're still here. That marshal around anywhere? No, he's in town. Good. I figured you would have started by now. I'm glad you didn't. You can't go through Antelope Valley. It's full of Comanches. You're going to have to turn the herd around and take the regular trail. Did you risk your neck to come back and tell us that? You sure I couldn't let you ride right into those Comanches. You better get started. Hey, yeah, but you got to get out of here first. We're not leaving right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Where's Rowdy? Rowdy, well, he'll be back directly. Come on now. Where is he? He's in jail. In jail? What for? Well, there's nothing to worry about. 
Now, wait a minute. Dixon took him in for helping me get away, didn't he? Now, take it easy, Jed. He ain't got nothing on him and can't prove a thing. He'll be out in no time. Sure, they're bound to turn him loose real soon, Jed. Now, come on. Not if Dixon has anything to say about it. He's liable to be in prison for years. Impossible. Anyway, it's not for you to worry about. We got ourselves a plan all worked out now. Now, bet I know what it is. You plan on breaking him out, isn't that right? And maybe you'll all have to go to prison. No, it's nothing like that at all. Now, you get out of here. I'm going. Rowdy was right. What do you mean? There's no running away. I should have known that. What are you going to do? Something I should have done before. But, Jed, this fight is between Dixon and me. And I'm going to keep it that way. Get off that horse. Now drop your gun. Don't try anything, brothers. I'll take him into jail if you want, Marshal. No, I told you before, Sheriff, I don't need any help. Any man I've ever gone after, I've brought in by myself. Well, he came in of his own free will to give himself up. Now, don't you think that... He's a wanted killer, Sheriff. You stay out of it. Let me handle him. What he's trying to say is he'd like you to look the other way. Just long enough for him to gun me down. Not in my town. You giving yourself up, mister? That's what I'm here for. All right, I'll take that gun belt. Oh, just one thing more. You made a mistake about Yates in there. You can't hold him because you don't have a case against him. Because I'll swear to it that he never tried to help me escape. This changes things. I'll put him in a cell until I can arrange for transportation. Stage East goes out in three hours. Now, what about Yates? I don't care what you do with him. I've got the man I came for. to Missouri. Well, that's a dumb idea. Yeah, isn't it? Anyhow, you're wanted back at the herd. Let him out. He had nothing on me. No, you're just one of his mistakes. Well, I didn't need you to correct it for me. Maybe I just like to travel. You haven't traveled yet, and you might not. Marshal, I'd like to see a wanted poster on that man in there. Why? It's none of your business. It is my business. He happens to be one of my top hands. I don't believe he's a murderer. I don't care what you believe. Why is he wanted at all? Now, wait a minute, Yates. Why would the marshal be here otherwise? You know, I'd like to know that. He made a mistake about me. How do you know he hasn't made a mistake about Jed? In 25 years as a marshal, I've never made a mistake about a criminal. Every man I went after paid for his crimes. Well, then show us a wanted poster. By the way, how come the sheriff here, he never received one? I don't have to answer to you, Yates, and I don't intend to. But let me warn you again. I'm taking him out on the next stage east. And you better not try to stop me. Sheriff. Doesn't it seem kind of strange to you? Hmm? In your your experience as being a lawman, every man you ever arrested was guilty? You never made a mistake? No, I, I can't say that. I don't think anyone can. I know that man in there. He swears he's telling the truth. There's no charge on him. Well, then he has nothing to fear back there. If he ever gets back there. You're not seriously suggesting. Yes, I am seriously suggesting. I think Dixon has any intention of getting him back there. I think he plans to shoot him. He tried it yesterday, and he could have captured him. 
If he takes him back to Missouri, he's going to find there's no charge waiting on him. But why? That's a good question. I think the man is possessed by some need to be proven right, even if it's only to himself. Well, there's one way we can find out. Huh? Telegraph Missouri. Ask about this James Crothers. Come on. waiting on that stage. Why, sure. It's easy to kill him this way. We better go riding, too. All right. Better go tell Rowdy, though. Now, he'll never let us hold up a man with a star. Look, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Now, you come on. third of charges not wanted. No new charges or evidence known here. Never heard of Jed Colby. Anson Dixon retired as U.S. Marshal. Present whereabouts unknown. Well, I guess that about says it. Huh? You were right. It's a good thing we didn't let him get away. Come on, let's get back. Dixon came by and got him. They left our horses maybe 15 minutes ago. for it, Dixon. Why don't you get it over with? What's wrong with right here? Oh, you want to get further away from that sheriff, don't you? You don't want anyone coming after you. You're trying to force me into making a move before I'm ready. Forget it. You're wasting your time, brothers. What if I decide not to go back with you? That's up to you. Because I'll take you back. Dead if I have to. You got some special reason for coming all this way after me? Was Ed Carley some special friend of yours? I didn't even like him. You got some special hate for me? 
Hardly knew you. Was it because I rode with the cross X bunch? Were you on the other side of that feud? I had no use for either side. Then why? Save your breath, Crothers, while you can. Name is Colby. I only used Crothers when I went to work for the Cross X Bunch. Figured I might get into some kind of trouble. You did. I asked you something. Why? You wouldn't understand. Why, Dixon? All right, Crothers, I'll tell you. Once. I've been a lawman better than half my life. Never made more than $40 in one month. Never had a place or money enough for a wife and kids. I got a half-gimped leg from taking in the Barlow gang. And a silver plug here for a bone where I let a drunk prisoner pistol club me once. Just once. 25 years on out as a lawman and nothing better than that to show for it. Except for one thing. Not one man I ever took in got loose from me. Not one. Except for me, is that it? That's it. Not one, except for you. You were right, Dixon. I wouldn't understand. What are you going to do when you get back? Tell them I confessed and then tried to run away and you had to shoot me. Is that what you're going to tell them, Dixon? I've got the confession all written out. And you're going to sign it before you die. No. No, I'm not. I've been told that by suspects before. And they ended up with their names signed on confessions. So will you. Hold up over there. Dixon, come on out. We know your prisoner's not wanted. Dixon! Come on. Kill that Carly. Yes, you did. No. Well, you were wrong from the first. No. Never wrong. It was you. And I almost got you. Still believing he was right. Well, once he tried to pin it on me, he couldn't admit he was wrong. Guess I owe you all some thanks. Forget it.
All right, let's get into the town. All right. You can tell a lot from the way the cattle fall, but the same can't be said for the drovers you hire along the way. It's hard to judge a man by his voice. That's why we keep gaining some, losing others. It's my job to judge, and sometimes I miss. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. any murders on my drive. That man's a gunman, Mr. Favor. A killer. Well, now, whether you believe it or not, I wasn't going to kill him. I only wanted to make him talk. As long as it's just talk. If anything happens to that boy, though, I'll know who did it. I told you. He's a killer. You got proof, Toby? Well, I can get it if you give me a chance. I'll give you a chance to get back to camp. And for your sake, that boy better stay healthy. You've made a bad decision, Mr. Favor. And on a cattle drive, a trail boss can't afford to make bad decisions. Get back to camp. Toby's been trying to warn you about Johnny Camber. Hmm? I believe him. That kid does look like the pictures of Billy Carter on the wanted posters. Billy Carter's as bad as they come. All I ask of a man is he does his job. As long as Johnny Camber does that, he stays. All right, boss. But you'll be taking the herd through the toughest country we've tried yet with the worst crew we've ever had. You've hired a gunman, a camp... Th I know what I hired, what I'm up against. You better stick to scouting, Pete. I'll drive herd. <laughs> wish. You got a mighty peculiar way of taking a bath, friend. Well, I'm getting ripe. You know, as Mr. Favor always says, do a thing right and proper the first time. You cooking stew again? Now, you know darn well I'm cooking down tallow for lye soap. Oh, well, I should have known. It smells better than the grub you've been handing out. Now, what are you standing there for? Get on back to work. Jed was just talking about it. Looks mean, and there's a lot of it. Well, it's the wrong time of year. Two or three weeks earlier, even later, wouldn't have no trouble, but... Jed, when you were a trail boss, you lost a herd trying to take it through this way, didn't you? Well, everybody knows that. Why'd you lose it? No use putting old Jed through that, boss. Why, Jed? Well, like you, I tried it at the wrong time of year. And like you again the other day. I had to take on a lot of extra hands I wasn't sure of. How far is it across, Pete? Jed says about 40 miles. Counted most of a week's drive. Can we take the herd through? Well, this is my first time through here. I can't be sure. What about water? Jed tells me there used to be water out about 12 miles, but not much of it. What about going around? We'd have to cut north through Torlone Pass. It means doubling back. Adds up to two or three weeks more time, but... Jed, didn't you say something about having trouble in Torlone Pass, too? That's right, Mr. Favor. Had to turn back. Of course, that was a long time ago. You take a chance on dried up creeks and streams and the rocky grounds hard on the cattle's hoofs. Any better than this? That's hard to say. Two, three weeks. We might run into the same thing. All right, Pete. We'll take him through this way. 
That settles that. Mr. Favor knows what he's doing. He sure doesn't want any company when he goes to making up his mind. You're going to find out, Pete, that the man who has to make the decisions is about the loneliest man there is. give you a hand. Sticking cockleburrs in a man's bedroll don't strike me as being funny. I was just fishing them out. Who put them there? Well, now, I can't tell you. You wouldn't want me to. Just make trouble with one of your friends. Well, you listen to me, Myers. Maybe you were doing me a favor, and maybe you weren't. Either way, if I catch you messing around with my gear again, I'm gonna stretch your ears. Now, get away from me. That's the thanks a man gets for being friendly. If you're missing anything, you ain't the first one in this camp. Man has to be sure before he starts to talk like that. It ain't so hard being sure of something, but proving it's something else. Talking ain't gonna help either way. That makes you right. I just want to make sure you hadn't taken up swallowing the whole steer, horns and all. Cuckleburrs. If you hadn't come busting up, I'd have had a chance to do something more than just talk. Now look. You know how Mr. Favor feels about trouble with this crew. There ain't gonna be none. Not without a cause. I figure you give a Jasper like Myers enough rope, and he'll throw a loop around anything that ain't tied down. All right, all right. I'm shut. <laughs> Hey, boss, um, how far does a man go with something he isn't sure about? You got something on your mind, let's have it. Well, it's Carl Myers. He isn't liked around camp. Well, no, I didn't hire him on just to be liked. Well, I caught him going through my bedroll. He said he was picking out some cockleburro some Yahoo put there. Had him in his hand, too. Isn't much when it's said. You missing anything? No. A man deserves the benefit of a doubt. Yeah. Check out your supplies. You never know the time I didn't. I'm heading into dry country from here on in. Still time to send a man into three corners, anything we need. We do it tonight. No need, Mr. Favor. Check again to make sure. Check again? You think I was a green-eared tenderfoot or something? Mr. Favor, can I have a word with you, Private? There's nothing you can't say in front of the rest of the men. Just as you say, Mr. Favor. It's about crossing the dry plains. It's the wrong time. You know it, I know it. But I want you to know that I think you can make it. That's all I got to say. Don't you listen to him, Mr. Favor. Jed Blaine's been around these parts for a long time. Everybody knows that he lost his herd trying to stake plains at the wrong time of the year. He's never been able to live it down. He'd like you to try this drive. And he can always say he ain't the only trail boss who lost a herd and a crew. You believe that, Mr. Favor? 
Any reason not to believe it yet? I'm going to take this herd straight across. Won't be easy, but it can be done. We're going to keep those cows in the move. You'll eat and sleep in the saddle. Maybe you'll cuss the day you signed on. But we're going across. Any man who thinks different can draw his time right now. Only a fool would cut straight across in this time of weather. Not only that... Draw your time, get your gear, get out. Anybody else want to go with him? I don't like to wrap it out on you, Mr. Favor. But it wasn't just cows that died out there with Jed. It was men, too. I reckon I'll draw my time and string along with Bates. How about you, Jed? Well, I signed on, Mr. Favor. I'll stay on. Want to be an eyewitness if I lose the herd? I'll stay on. Howdy, get the cash box. Pay those three off. See they're out of camp tonight. Mr. Favor is sure set in his ways, even when he's wrong. Who says he's wrong? I say he's wrong taking us through this way. He's wrong thinking old Jed would give him bum advice because he wants to see this herd lost. Look, Mr. Favor knows more about taking a herd through than you'll ever know, Pete. Even if that's right, Rowdy, it ain't for you to say it. Look, I'll say what I want to you or anyone else around here. started wearing it, Billy. <laughs> My name's Johnny. Johnny Camber. It's been a long while. But I had to make sure you were Billy Carter before I killed you. I told you my name's Johnny Camber. Now I'll tell you something else. Keep away from me. All right, Billy, for now. I just wanted you to know I knew. Any trouble? No, it's just that I don't understand about us driving across here, even though the old man did say you have a chance. Bet Bates was right about the old man. Think he was egging me on just because misery needs company. Yeah, but you're risking the herd just to save a few days. Look, Rowdy, the price of beef jumps up and down according to supply. Now, you've got to reach the market at a time when the price is high enough to make the drive worthwhile. Yeah, well... Well, why don't you say that to Pete and the others? Why don't you just let them I go I can't stop to give a lecture every time I want to do something. They ought to figure it out themselves. So should you. You better turn in. We've got a long day's work ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah, I...
before I get back and dig out one of them hams, a couple of loaves of bread. one of those Indian mummies. One dipper to a man until we get to some water. Mr. Faber's orders. Why, you old goat, you just love giving orders, don't you? Oh, lay off, Rowdy. What do you got to shoot your mouth off about? Fine job of trail guiding you've been doing. It's Mr. Faber's choosing, not mine. Not the way I see it. You left him in a hole by not choosing back there at three corners before we started the dry plains. Coming from a kid still wet behind the ears, I'm gonna let that pass. Well, don't do me any favors, Pete. I can take care of myself with you or any other man on this crew. Pete, Mr. Favor wants you. miles. I think it's too far the shape this herd is in. I asked how far, not what you thought. Keep moving another two, three miles and circle them in. Reach that water tomorrow. Yes, sir. Where's the sugar, Wishbone? Ain't got none. Thought you uh, checked out your supplies. Well, I did. But I counted a sack of beans instead of sugar. Now, doing without sweets ain't gonna kill none of this hard rock outfit. You did your job right. You wouldn't have to do without anything. Well, that was my fault, Mr. Favor. I thought it was sugar. I don't care whose fault it was. Still no sugar, no excuse for not having any. Boy, I tell you, this outfit's falling apart, and I ain't gonna take much more of it. <laughs> well, I told you, Pike, is you knew how to play poker. Maybe it's the way you play. Maybe you're just a poor loser. It's better than being a poor winner, or a crooked one. Now listen, Clark, get off my back and stay off. I'm getting tired of you and your cracks. Shindig like this, and you're both through. Myers, you're late for your trick at night herd. No dirty cheat's gonna draw a pig sticker on me and get I away said with that's it. enough. some music. Might make things seem a little better. Shut up, that caterwauling. Just trying to help. You all know that Myers is a thief and a cheat. Mr. Favor had no right taken up for him. You got no call to say that, Clark. Mr. Favor didn't take up for anyone. Well, it seemed that way to me. And you're a poor one to talk. He tried to steal from you, too. 
You don't know that any more than I do. Why, half the men in this crew are missing stuff from their gear, and we all know who's taking it. There's nothing lower than a trail camp thief. There's one thing. A woman killer like Billy Carter. Maybe some of you heard of Billy Carter. Fast gun with ten notches. I keep wondering if he cut another one for the girl he killed. My daughter, Jenny, was just 18 when she ran off with young Billy Carter. I wasn't home when he rode up for a job. I hired on with a herd on the Goodnight Loving Trail. When I got back, she was gone with him. And I went after him. When I caught up with him, Jenny was dead. Killed by a bullet meant for Billy Carter. She was going to have his baby when she died. I've been looking for Billy Carter ever since. Say, hey, boss. Yeah? What are you going to do about the trouble between Talby and Johnny Camber? Do? What do you expect me to do? I can't wipe the nose of every man in this outfit. I think Johnny Camber's who he says he is. You do? Yes, I do. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you. Nothing but loose dirt out here. Make digging a grave real easy. that swale back ridge. No graze, though. And we'll have to water them in bunches. There's only room for about 50 head at a time. Right. Now, say, Pete, uh, about yesterday, well, I, I didn't mean to be so sharp with you. I, uh... You don't owe me no apology, Mr. Favor. You're the boss. Right back to Quince and Scarlet. Tell them to slow up the main body of the herd. I'll send the point into water first. Break off the first 50 head. Pete says there's water beyond that rise. Take them in, let them drink, move them out for the next bunch to get in. Right. Gunny! Slow them down. Break them in bunches of 50. Didn't you, Jed? It wasn't poison when I got my herd here, Mr. Favor. It wasn't. It was bone dry. I should have turned back and didn't. All right, let's get back to the herd. You'd have gotten a big laugh out of this if I'd have taken a drink of that, wouldn't you, Pete? 
Rowdy, lay off of me. I'm not going to tell you again. All right, break it off. Why, young... Let him up, Jed. He's been asking this for a long time. Stay out of it, Mr. Favor. What's the matter with you? With both of you? Hey, boss, I... I didn't mean to... That's the trouble with this outfit. Nobody means to. It just happens. of it. It ain't fit for humans, but it'll keep the cattle from choking on their own tongues. How far? About a mile and a half. No more. All right, we'll try to make it. Roddy, get back to Wishbone. Have them move the wagon up ahead. I want coffee and sandwiches waiting when we bring the herd in. Wake up, you no good. It'll be in a few minutes. Wishbone. Now what? Look at this bread. What's the matter with it? It's hard as a board. Can't you even bake bread? What was driving day after day, every day, and now night after night? When do I have the chance? I warned you, if you can't handle the job right... Then say I can't. Get yourself a new cook, Mr. Favor. I'm done. Gee, Mr. Favor, you think he means it? Mushy, you're the new cook. The men will want those sandwiches in five minutes. What's the matter with you, Wishbone? Oh, get away from me. Go on, leave me alone. I ask you a question. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with everybody around here? What's the matter with Mr. Favor? What's the matter with you? Well, I mean quitting like this. You know Mushy hasn't got the brains to eat the food, let alone cook it. Oh, so now my cooking's getting good, is it? Well, you can just darn well thrive on the memory of it, because it's the last of it you're ever going to get. Why, you old coot. Don't you call me an old coot, you whelp. Look, I don't give a hang about your lousy cooking. I don't give a hang about what you give a hang about. Now, you get out of here before I... Before you what? Before I blast that whelp face of yours right out from under your hat. You see what I mean now? What's what you mean? You're, you're pointing that gun at me. You want to fire it, don't you? You're mighty well told I want to fire it. Now, you get away from me before I blast your... Yeah, I guess I see what you mean. Do you wish? Well, I'm not so sure I do. All I know is a couple days back, you wouldn't have poked a gun in my face no matter how sore you got at me. Something just seems to have happened. Everybody's at everybody else's throat like a pack of bobcats. Everybody thinks everybody else is wrong, too. I sure wish I knew why. Well, there's certain times, I guess, when everything's got to go wrong. All wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's the heat. Uh, we've, we've been through heat before. Well, 
maybe it's Mr. Favor. Going across the dry plains when he should have gone around. Now, who says he should have gone around? I say. Well, who are you to say? You're not helping him move any. Quitting him when he needs you the most. You think you're being his little helper? Picking a fight with Myers over some cockle burrs? And driving at Pete just because you think he was wrong for not warning Mr. Favor sooner? Pete was wrong. Who says he was wrong? I say he's wrong. Uh, who are you to say? Well, I'll show you, you lice-bitten old coot. Uh, you get out of here before I blast that sniveling whelp face of yours right off of this wagon. Where's my watch, you low-down thieving coyote? I don't know what you're talking about. Dead. Rowdy, tell Mr. Favor I'll be back. If I don't. Quince, you and Kyle take care of him. And Joe, go get Mr. Favor, will you? Whose gear is this? Johnny Cameras. Well, clean it up. Mushy, help him get this gear cleaned up. Jed catches up with that dirty murdering thief. You setting yourself up as judge and jury? I caught up with him. He might have been real quick with the knife, but he wasn't very fast with the gun. Clark had him figured right, Mr. Favor. Most anything belonging to anybody in this camp worth more than a quarter. Right here. your razor, Mr. Favor? Hey, Mushy, your coffee's boiling over. <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Rowdy. I ain't got the hang of everything yet. Is Wishbone still holding his grouch? Oh, he's lying in there, looking up at nothing. He didn't even cuss me out this morning. Well, I've been thinking, wishing things was back the way they was. Well, you ain't the only one.
I got a hunch they're gonna get worse. <laughs> Next to this, that poison spring, it tastes good. Good mind at that, Mr. Rowdy. time, Billy, but I had to be sure. All right, Talby. Get your gun, Billy. Talby, I told you his name is Johnny Camber. You can settle what's between you when you leave the crew. No, Mr. Favor. I'm sorry, but it's got to be settled now. I waited too long to let you or anybody else cheat me. I'm not gonna have any more trouble on this camp. You won't stop me, Mr. Favor. You can't. Billy Carter stole my daughter, my only child. And afterwards, he killed her just as if he pointed a gun himself. Well, I'll kill him with my bare hands if I have to. Easy, Tommy. Give him his gun, Mr. Favor. There's no use in letting it hang fire. We can end it right now. What chance would he have against you? Billy Carter with 10 notches on your gun. Stay out of it, Pete. Is what Talby said true, Johnny? I'm Billy Carter. I'll give him his gun. No. You won't need one now. <laughs> This is the way you want it, Mr. Favor. I guess it has to be all right with me. He wanted you to kill him. His gun ain't loaded. Why? Going on this way, thinking about her every hour of every day, seeing her face every time I close my eyes. He found her picture, but he didn't find this. Marriage license. You and Jenny. Why didn't you tell me? Why should I let you think your daughter's name was Mrs. Billy Carter? It's all over. The day we got married, I let her throw away every shell I had for my gun. And I swore I'd never buy any more. I never have. But the, w the way she died. We just found out she was going to have a baby. She was so happy. Because I just told her we were going back to tell you. But a drunken gunslinger recognized me and drew on me. Jenny jumped between us. She died there in the street. Look, looking up at me. All right, so I was wrong about Myers and Johnny, too. I got an ownership paper saying I always got to be right. It's over and done with. I want the herd headed up and moving out in 15 minutes. Mr. Favor. Some of us haven't had a chance to eat yet. No rest and not a decent meal for days. If you think you can keep pushing men like that, you're wrong a third time. I said I wanted that herd moving in 15 minutes. Then you can move them yourself. Midway Valley's not over four hours drive from here. There's enough grass there to rest the herd. You don't need a scout. 
You don't need anybody. Anybody else feels the same way as Pete. They can ride out with him. You're all a bunch of yellow quitters. How about you, Jed? Well, I signed on to help get these cows through. Now, I had a herd quit me once, but I never quit a herd. I'm staying, Mr. Favor. Talby, is Johnny able to ride? You say, Talby. You can ride enough to help. We're staying. Rowdy, get the cash box, pay him off. Then let's get these beeves on the move. Mushy, you got your wish. As of right now, you're a working cowhand. All right, let's get our gear and get out of here. He didn't quit. Scarlet or Quince either. What is it? Dry. Dry as a bone. Well, Midway Valley's just over that rise. Keep moving! Valley. Sun and dusk can do in a few days. One thing a trail boss needs is good judgment. It's wrong about Myers, Johnny, Jed. Now it looks like I've been wrong thinking I could get this outfit across the dry plains. Well, the way I see it, a man takes on a job, he ought to see it through. No matter how much he don't like it or how much it cost him? Try turning the herd, boss. There's nothing behind him. It's too late to turn back. As you might guess, there's no water. As far as I know, there's no chance of finding any water between here and the end of the dry plains. Am I right, Jed? That's right, Mr. Favor. That means at least three, four more days with the cattle. If we had enough hands, we could force the cattle across, but with only us, well, I don't, I don't need to tell you. Can't be done, all I have to do is look at them. It's gonna be kind of hard to say. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Favor. Don't say it. I guess I know too. He's the boss, let him say it. No, that's just the point. I don't have the right to be boss any longer. I'm afraid I've proved that. All the other hands realized it and left. For staying with me. Thanks. No, I don't see how anybody could be quite as wrong as I was, still give an order and expect to have it carried out. But that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm giving you one last order. 
and I still expect to have it carried out. I want you all to move out on your own. Get through as best you can. Without you? Lack of water can kill you just as quick as it can kill the steers. What are you planning on doing? Staying out here with these lousy cows? I don't know much about droving, Mr. Favor, but if you're trying to get rid of us, you... That's what he's trying to do, son. Oh, now it's time somebody begun to talk sense around here. Oh, that's enough, Wishbone. No, it's not, Mr. Favor. I told you to move on, all of you. That's an order. You trying to get rid of us because you don't want us to sit out here and watch the cattle drop? What do I have to do to get rid of you? Don't you understand there's no water here? Not only for the herd, there's none for you either. Now, you can get through. You're not tied down with the cattle. So start moving out, now. I have to watch my herd, but there's nothing says I gotta watch you. Now get out of my sight, all of you! I ain't got any place to go, Mr. Favor. Me neither. You can do without water for a couple days. I ain't a bit thirsty, Mr. Favor. There. You see, Mr. Favor? You see? You stoop. What are you all standing around for? Let's see if we can get these lousy cows back on their feet. Mr. Favor, out there. We got lost. You got lost? Yeah, I, it's rough out there. Pete, Scarlet, and me. We couldn't find our way. We didn't know which way to go. We sort of miscalculated, Mr. Favor. It was a small mistake. Natural thing, making mistakes. We figured if you'd sort of let us stroll along with you, we wouldn't make no more mistakes. What'd you find up ahead? We found some water, and the grass is a lot better on the other side of the valley. You'd be wanting to take them straight through? Yeah, Pete. Straight through. Well, Rowdy, you're gonna stand around up here all day, you're gonna earn your pay. I thought I'd be glad to see you, you old brush popper. <laughs> <laughs> What else would you expect a crew like yours to do, Mr. Favor? You had the right hunch all the time. Looks like you're gonna make it. We'll make it, Jed. Keep looking at them, the herd and the drovers. Which is more important? Beeves are worth over $20 a head when we get to Sedalia, Missouri. And the drovers? And I can't sell them. Most of them won't be there when we get to Sedalia. It's the thing you get to thinking of on the drive. Who's worth more? The cattle or the drovers who get them there? And I'm one of the drovers. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. I told you once, Mushy, I told you a thousand times. A thousand times? Oh. There's two ways to build a fire. Now, what are they? The right way and the wrong way. They wish. Fire's smoking. I know it's smoking. Well, there's only two ways to build a fire. You just take care of your scouting and leave me to take care of the fires. Huh. It's still smoking. I took a look up ahead. Yeah, what's the trouble? There ain't none. Land's as flat as the palm of your hand. It's well watered and green. Stop it, Pete. You're breaking Roddy's heart. I don't know. It just ain't natural. Everything going so easy.
Much of a hurry. That wagon of theirs must be real delicate. Or the lady riding on it. They act like they got a wagon load of eggs. Well, we could use some fresh eggs, Mr. Wishbone. No, oh, shut up. Feel that. How far is it to Benton's crossing? About 30 miles, but you're traveling in the wrong direction. We are. It's south of here, you're traveling east. You must have guessed wrong at that last turnoff. Which is the quickest way of getting there? Feet. Well, you could backtrack or uh, cut across country, save yourself a few miles. That'd be pretty rough going. It'd be getting dark in an hour anyway. You mind if we camp here tonight? Might as well. All right, I'll tell Mr. and Mrs. Parker, see what they want to do. Is uh, Mrs. Parker not feeling well? She's fine. He said we're heading in the wrong direction. We better camp here tonight. She looks fine, too. Yeah. Take it easy, Parker. All right, all right. you uh, go on over and invite him to have supper with us? Yeah, I sure will. Uh, Roddy. Hmm? All of them. Oh, Mr. Parker? Yes? Uh, our boss uh, says he'd like to have you join us for supper, if you feel like it. Well, I don't think... Uh... Of course we will. Oh, that'll be fine, ma'am. Oh, uh, is there anything wrong with this wagon here? We'll help you fix it if there is. Uh, thank you. Everything's fine with the wagon. Do you have a good cook? Oh, wishbone? Oh. <laughs> None of us have starved to death, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Where can I water them? Oh, the stream's right down there. My name's Favor. Oh, Matt Holden, Mr. Favor. Mr. Holden. You been doing anything about what they might have in that way? That ain't none of our business. I hope it stays that way. I haven't tasted coffee as good as this since we left the East. He's going to be glad to hear that, but don't tell him. Why not? The stew was delicious. He's hard enough to live with as it is. More coffee, Mr. Parker? More stew, Mrs. Parker? No, thank you, Wishbone, but it was very good. It's a pleasure to meet people who appreciate the finer things of life. Come out here all the way in that wagon? Hardly. We came to the Gulf by boat. By boat? It must have been a lot more comfortable than riding in that wagon, huh? Oh, I don't really mind. It's sort of exciting. The rate you're traveling is going to take you quite a while to get anywhere. Well, we're not in a hurry to get anywhere. Get away from there. Well, I was just... I said, get away from the wagon. Put the gun away, Holden. Not until he... Put it away. Please, ma'am. Quince?
I think you finished eating, Mr. and Mrs. Parker. Holden? Look, we don't want you to think. What? Well, James, they're all curious. We can't really blame them, can we? I suppose not. Matt, why not show our friends what we're carrying? It's all right. They're good people. That gentleman is a bottle of champagne. Put it back, Holden. We're carrying two dozen cases, Mr. Favor. That may explain our extreme caution with the wagon. Champagne bruises so easily. We imported the wine from France. Each bottle is almost worth its weight in gold. So you can understand our reluctance to discuss our cargo. Sure. Well, I think we'd better turn in. Good night. I suppose you gentlemen are disappointed we didn't turn out to be bank robbers. Nobody said you were. <laughs> no, but plenty of you must have thought so. <laughs> Good night. Hey, Wishbone. Tell me something. Just what is this champagne? Your ignorance astonishes me, Quince. Well, all right, but what champagne? Well. Well, it's wine, that's what it is. Wine? Well, why don't they call it wine? Well, because... because it's champagne. Now, what is it you want? I just wanted to ask you, what's champagne? What? Oh. Make Mr. Wishbone some in. I don't know, maybe you just don't like champagne. Hey, uh, have you ever tasted this stuff? I never even heard of it. Sure must be mighty fine tasting. Them toting it around the careful way they are. Do you, uh, you think they uh, might miss one little old bottle? After all, they uh, kind of owe it to us. Did feed them supper, didn't we? We sure did. Mushy? Huh? Better get a wishbone. Oh, he'll kill me. I'll help him if you don't hurry up. I'll get him. Get. Mr. Wishbone, Quince and I got a bottle of champagne. Why don't you open it? 
Have you gone out of your mind? Not that you had very far to go. But Mr. Wishbone, is there anybody else in this whole camp knows anything about champagne? Well, of course not. Well. Stealing a bottle of champagne. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, we ain't exactly stole it. We sort of barred it. I heard likelier stories from born horse thieves. Um, wouldn't you kind of like a drink of the stuff? Well, you ought to be sure it's a real imported kind. All right. Let's see you get the cork out. Darn thing's all fenced in. That's to keep the cork from popping. Go ahead, Mushy. You can have the first taste. Well? It's real good, only it tastes terrible. Yeah, let me try that. That darn stuff break a man in the habit of drink. Well, you two just ain't got the taste for champagne. That ain't champagne. That's bottled fire. Don't throw it! Get to the herd! Got nothing but a scratch. That's mighty powerful champagne. What kind of grapes them French using these days. Why don't you leave the stuff alone? That don't matter now. It matters to us. No harm was done, Matt. These jugheads. They could have blown up the whole wagon. You mean you've got a whole wagon load of that stuff? That's our concern. Not when you bring it into our camp, it. You could have something else to worry about. What do you have in those bottles? Champagne. I can find out for myself. James, perhaps we'd better. Oh, all right. Nitroglycerin. What's nitroglycerin? High explosive, but a hundred times more powerful than gunpowder. Now we all know. Quince? Yeah. Pete's with the herd. Ride out and tell them to get the bees moving north. No stopping, not even for meals. Keep moving until Roddy and I catch up. How long do you figure? 24 hours. We'll stay here and make sure the wagon don't follow. Wishbone, break camp. Come on, Mushy. Mushy! Swallow some of that stuff. Well, that don't matter. Come on. Oh, don't do that. What's the matter? Are you afraid you're going to explode? Might as 
well start breathing. Supposing the air sets the stuff off. Well, we're gonna find out sooner or later anyway. Any idea how dangerous the transport in a nitroglycerin can be? Do you? I learned a bit about it in the army. A lot of men have been killed handling that stuff. All it needs is a joke. Sometimes not even that much. Even too much heat can set that stuff off. Not you worried about staying around a wagon load of it? There's a federal law against the illegal possession of explosives. What makes you think our possession is illegal? Carting it around like you are in those champagne bottles. And in the first place, the army's the only one allowed to transport nitroglycerin. You got any idea what the penalty is for doing what you're doing? Want to tell us? Death by hanging. You know enough about law to be a marshal, Mr. Favor. Oh, I'm satisfied being a trail boss. Then you have no intention of heroically escorting us to the nearest town? I just want to see my herd gets a good safe distance ahead before you start moving that wagon. There's 30 miles of rough country between here and Benton's Crossing. What do you figure your odds are of making it? I think the odds are just fine. Susan, they're only waiting till the herd gets clear. They can identify us, James. They can ride into town and notify the law. We travel too slowly to risk that. Matt, get this man's gun. wearing the pants in the Parker family. It's the nitro that bothers me, not the pants. It's light enough to move now. Get him in the wagon. You can put Mr. Parker in the wagon. You ain't gonna be too comfortable in there. If the nitro were to go, I'd be the first, wouldn't I? But you wouldn't be far behind. It's a little happy thought. There's 30 miles to Benton's Crossing. Matt and I are going to be on the wagon. You two are going to walk ahead. Make sure the ground's smooth enough. You won't be far enough ahead, though, if anything happens to the nitro. Not far enough ahead to be safe. That's going to take a lot of time. We've got time. What happens when we get to Benton's Crossing? Someone's waiting with a barge. I don't know what happens to you when we get there. Get the horses. Steal a wagon load of trouble like that, anyway. Parker said a bottle of champagne's worth its weight in gold. I don't know about the champagne, but in mining country, that nitro would be worth a lot more than that. One 
more like that. They're trying to get us killed? That's not a bad idea. One of you we need. The other we can get rid of right now. Let him talk. He's scared. He's good enough to shoot. Now, you watch for rocks on the road, you hear? We hear. Don't push them too hard, man. You start to worrying about their health? We need them. If he hadn't got himself shot. Yeah. You think he's gonna last till we get the nitro loaded? He'll last. But not after her. All right, get going, drovers. Too big to dig out. Well, it looks like this is the end of the trip. This trip ain't gonna end till we get the Benton's Crossing, not before. You gonna try to drive the wagon over this? No. We're gonna pull it over. We'll have to unload this stuff before we take the wagon over the rock. We can't do that. We can't put it out in the hot sun. Your nitroglycerin. And your life. All right. Unhitch those horses. Get down, Susan. What about Parker? He's a sick man. Too sick to haul a wagon around. You leaving him in the wagon? He'll be just as safe as the rest of us. Susan, get the horses, take him off the road. I'll take them. Isn't there some other way you could have gotten what you wanted out of life? You know, you're a pretty woman. You could have gotten it without getting caught up in all this. How would you know what I want? Money, ain't it? It's a part of it. A small part. Wagon over them boulders. Horses lose their footing too easy. Get too skittish. I hope you ain't. You're talking a lot. Yeah. I'm sweating a lot too, but it don't mean a thing. Except you're scared. Sure, I'm scared. You mean you're not? Yep. Well, let's get it over with.
right now. Let her down easy. Well, that wasn't too bad. We still got the second wheel to get over. It'll come just as easy. I don't get it. Stealing a load of nitroglycerin, switching it to champagne bottles, carting it all over the country. She sure doesn't seem the way a man like you would do things. And how do you figure I'd do things? Get fast, get away fast. Stagecoaches, banks. You're right. You get the money that way, not the other things. What other things? All right, we've got another wheel to get over. That's right. And talking ain't gonna get it done. All right. Champagne corks popping. That was bad. Real bad. Could have been worse. Bring the horses, Susan. You want to know something? We'd have never made it if we hadn't taken you along. You're right. Down below in the shade. First you say we can't travel by night, now you say we can't travel by day. Look, I ain't worried about us, it's that nitro. Heat can make it flow just as sure as bumping it. How much heat? I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Susan, water, please. There isn't much. I want water. Matt? There ain't much. He's got fever. I ain't interested in his thirst. Drink as little as you can. There isn't much. Plenty of champagne to drink. Yellow, oily champagne that can blossom into bright red flowers. <laughs> I prefer water. I've always preferred water. But you, you were always the champagne type, weren't you? I was an engineer. I was trusted. What am I now? A thief. Fugitive. A sick man riding a wagon bound for nowhere. Your bandage needs changing. And my life needs changing. But I don't have to worry about that. You and Holden take care of that, won't you? You better rest. Boss? Huh? You want to make a try? I don't know. Right now, we couldn't get over 20 feet without being shot. I'm willing to take a chance. Yeah, but that ain't no chance. 
That nitro must be ready to boil. Look. See those green bushes down there? Maybe there's water there. James, would water help? Might. Wet blankets over the bottles. Come back here. Open the flap. This isn't nitroglycerin. That's right. Get the blankets out of there. There's a stream down there. You and me are going to take the blankets, soak them, and spread them over the nitro. What for? When it's hot enough to pop champagne, it's hot enough to boil nitro. Now pick up them blankets. enough. I could carry him. How far would we get? That nitroglycerin in there should explode. It'll take this whole mountain with it. We'll wait. Booker, how much time we got? Why well, ask me? You're the only one who would know. Nobody knows much about nitroglycerin. Even the engineers who use it. What was it going to be used for? Military construction. James. What difference does it make? He knows we've stolen it. What are you doing? Might as well give him a chance. We can always pick him up later. Say, how come you got champagne in with the nitro? If a military patrol or a sheriff got curious, we'd pour them a glass of champagne. There are two bottles in each case of nitro. How do you tell which is which? There are three rows of four bottles in each case. The two middle bottles in the middle row are the champagne bottles. Champagne tastes like. Uh, these blankets don't work. You're never gonna find out. You ever drunk any? Yeah. What's it? How'd you like it? Uh, I liked it fine at the time. Right now, I'm sorry they ever invented it. Yeah. It's up to the blankets now. Evaporation, my friend, that's what does it. It'll work. We're all right for now. Maybe. You feeling better? Much better. Get hold of Get hold of
had myself a little private explosion. Holden's taken off. Oh, we got the artillery, though, huh? What do you think you've done? Started my wound bleeding again. Storm coming in. Yeah. I don't like the idea of leaving you here alone. There's only one horse. It storm's coming in fast. You better get moving. How's Parker? All right. Bleeding stopped. You know, if that lightning hits anywhere near this wagon, it's gonna... Just get to the herd, bring back a half a dozen men. If Holden gets here first, you're gonna be a sitting duck. Move out! All right. Thunder. I didn't think there was anything to frighten you. Ever since I was a little girl, I've been afraid. Thunder won't hurt you. Well, I know. I know it's just the sound of the clouds bumping. It's the lightning that's really dangerous, I know, but I'm afraid. Whenever it stormed, I always used to run to my father. Never my mother. Women are no good, they're weak. I used to run to him and he'd hold me. He was strong, too. You should never have married me, Susan. If I ever get out of this, I'm going back east and give myself up to the authorities. Let them put you in a cage. Perhaps I belong in a cage. He wouldn't have you. I wouldn't want him. He's tame. Like you. Holden's all you can expect. For what he's worth. Don't you know Holden's going to get here with help a lot faster than your man? Help from where? Benton's Crossing. That's nothing but a river crossing. A barge is there with a gunman. Holden will bring him back. Two gunmen. How nice for you. That's the way it was planned from the beginning. We're going to load the nitroglycerin on the barge and float it downriver. It'll be safe that way. And sell it. I'll be rich and free. Free from your husband, maybe. You ain't never gonna be free from Holden. What makes you think I want to be? Holden will loan you in a way your husband never has. James is an engineer. He was satisfied to remain one for the rest of his life. I wanted more. It was my idea that we steal the shipment that James was supposed to deliver to the army at Fort Greene. You're proud of it. Of course I am. Money's only the beginning. I want power and position. Holden's a pretty big price to pay for it. Besides, all he wants is the money. You don't know that. We both saw him stay as clear as he could from the wagon when it looked like it was going to blow up from the heat. I'm not marrying Holden. Your husband's a better man. Why don't you run while you still can? I've been wondering that myself. How good are you at dying? That I never tried. 
You better do something. Or you're going to get your chance. Drop the rifle, Mr. Favor. I can get off a shot as quick as you can. Besides, if you miss, you'll blow up the whole countryside. You're forgetting about me. What are we going to do with him? What do you think we're going to do with him? If you kill him, you'll have to kill me, too. That's a thought. Susan. All right, move away from there. You want the lady to miss all the fun? It's the nitro I'm worried about. Well, it might go clear through him into that wagon. Let's go, mister. What are you trying to do, Mr. Favor? Make us think that's a bottle of nitro you're holding? Champagne? You're sure? I didn't get it out of the center of the case. Be careful, mister. What? Get us all blown up. All right, then, drop your gun. You do. Means jail, maybe hanging. Yeah, maybe, but not tonight. Tonight, I, I don't feel like getting splattered all over this mountain. All right. Hold on. Drop it by accident? I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. All right. All right, kick the guns over here. The rifle? You're bluffing. Am I? That champagne. You wouldn't dare handle nitro like that. If you don't give me that rifle, I'll drop this and uh, we may never know. Give me that bottle. The rifle. Take it. <laughs> Your bluff worked, didn't it? And I didn't have the nerve to call it. Some visitors. Holden picked him up. We saw the explosion, figured you'd open up another bottle. Yeah, that champagne is pretty heady stuff. Say, you didn't have time to get back to the herd. Well, didn't have to. Our horses caught up to the herd. Pete and the others figured something was wrong. I ran to him a few miles out here. Pete, next time I tell you to stay with the herd, stay with it. Yes, sir. This time, though, I must say it's pretty good to see you. Now get to Fort Greene. Have the army come back and pick up this little package. Get moving. Hey, uh, I kind of sneaked this away when the marshal wasn't looking, but I just don't like this stuff. You two want to finish it up? Good, I thought we were going to ride all night the way you were going. If you want to unsettle, I'll scare up a fire. 
I don't want to admit to hearing what I think I hear. What besides girls are those? Ballet dancers. Oh, I see ballet dancers at the Turkish Delight Saloon in San Antonio. Ballet, not belly. Oh, see longer skirts and shorter legs. Yeah, it's a big thing in Europe. Very popular. My lunch is going to be very popular in Texas, too. Uh -huh. Properly from here. Will you please follow me? You you weren't here from the beginning, were you? I know. Oh, well, I cannot permit that. A ballet must always be seen from the beginning. Well, I'm sorry. We didn't know one was being performed out here. Oh, I'm McKay. And Gil Favor, this is Roddy Yates, my ramrod. Ramrod? What's that? Oh, it means second in command. I'm trailboss of a herd that's coming through this way. Aye, indeed. Oh, I'm impressed. Won't you sit down? It's wine. French wine. The only thing to drink when you're seeing a beautiful ballet performance. Say, Mr. McKay. Yes, lad. This is a strange place to be holding a ballet. Oh, nonsense. There are times when McKay has to go to Europe to get a ballet. There are other times when the ballet has to be brought to McKay. <laughs> Maestro. Si, senor. And now you see a ballet as it should be seen. From the beginning, please.
<laughs> it was wonderful. Bravo! <laughs> Bravo! Wonderful, wonderful. Grazie, grazie, Signor McKay. And now, the 20 ounces of gold dust, as promised. Am I correct? You are a very generous, Signor. My mountains are very generous to me. Ladies, you were marvelous. You were a delight to the eye and the heart. And I'd like to give you a little present. Here, there's one for you. One for you. One for you. What's he giving him, Rox? I'll one give you nice long odds. Those are nuggets. One for you. Gold? And and one you carry it around like that? Oh, where would he get it? You heard him say those mountains of his had been very generous to him. And here's one for you. Now run along. Younger men are waiting all over the world. You mustn't keep them waiting. Oh, uh, Mr. McKay. Oh, yes. You don't have to thank me for the performance. I was happy to share my pleasure with you. Um, trail bus, you see. That's right. Where's your herd? About five, six hours ride south of here. Why aren't you with it? Well, we have to ride into Endicott in the morning. Endicott? <laughs> I know the town. It's a dusty eyesore on the bosom of the prairie. Keep away from it. And there isn't a girl to be found within its dirty confines. Well, we may not have to go there now we've run into you. We just wanted to get some information there about the dead mountains. What would you be seeking in the dead mountains? Water and a pass for the cattle. Plains are dry as a bone. Maybe you could tell us about it. Uh, you said you own the mountain. I do. What is it you want to know? Is there a way for the cattle to get through? There is indeed. And water? Enough to flourish a desert. Well, that's good news. Could you let us know the best way in? I'll take you there myself. Bless him. Where are your horses? Oh, we got them right across the knoll there. We were going to make night camp. Huh? Break camp. Go and get your horses and meet me here. Fine. <laughs> Funny old Jasper, isn't he? Yeah, it was a lucky break running onto him like that. Looks like a real old desert rat, the way he's dressed. Having them burrows and all. Mm. Well, the way he's throwing that gold around, he's one who found what he was looking for. Taken off as soon as we turned our backs. Yeah, but he was going to take us into the mountains. Yeah, except that must be the one thing in the world he's most afraid of. Well, we ain't after any gold. He don't know that. Well, what do we do now? Well, wait till sunrise, right up to those dead mountains, see if we can find a pass ourselves. So far, so good. Of course, we haven't gone far yet. Mm. Hold it. We ought to try making a run for it, huh? Well, this child ain't about to try and outrun bullets. Mountains, except the people in them. 
Raise your hands. Get off the horses. Where's he gone for help? They don't need any more help as far as I'm concerned. Why do you come to Dead Mountains? We look for water and a pass for our cattle. There is a pass. There is water. But they are both sacred to the Indians. You have come this far. No farther. We've got 3,000 head of cattle. They have to have water. If your people need cattle, maybe we could trade. No white man comes to Dead Mountains. White man, you're letting him go in the canyon. No white man rides to dead mountains. What are you talking about? He's riding right in there. I see no one. Must be joking or something. You're free to go back where you came from. What about our guns and horses? Okay. We don't want to break any of your tribal customs. Maybe it's only this pass that's sacred. This pass and all passes. Well, maybe it's only this part of the range. Every mountain in this range, every rock, every tree, every blade of grass is sacred to us and to our ancestors. You know, I might believe that if it wouldn't. Ah, uh, never mind. We wish you no harm. No blood has been drawn. We do not return, because if you do, there will be harm, and blood will be drawn. Whiskey or whiskey? Whiskey. You got a nice little town here. Endicott? You ain't had a real good look at it. Yeah, most stores did seem to be shut up. Permanent. Mr. Endicott ain't no town. It's just the leftovers. Well, you're in business. Uh, I'm just too lazy to move anyplace else. Besides, there was a time when Endicott was pretty flourishing. Lots of people had high hopes. What happened to it? Hopes need nourishing. Only reason old man Endicott started the town was he was sure there was gold in the dead mountains. Ain't there? Lots of men went into the mountains looking for it. Only one of them ever come back. 
Old man McKay. Ever hear of him? Yeah, we heard of him. Every day, every week. Gunmen, fortune hunters come trailing into town. All looking for old man McKay's gold. All of them packing guns. Willing and anxious to use them. Uh, what's your interest in the Dead Mountains? You looking for gold, too? No, not gold, water. We got 3,000 head of cattle on the Sedalia Trail. Why would you want to take cattle into them mountains? <clears throat> there ain't any water on the plains for 30 miles, that's why. If I was moving 3,000 head of cattle, I sure wouldn't want to take them into country I didn't know nothing about. That's why we're in Endicott, for some information about them. Information won't do you no good. What you need's a guide. You need somebody who knows them mountains as well as he knows his way from that front door over at this bar. That anybody in mind? Yes, I have. How'd you like to earn some money? No. Look, you're running short of money, I'm running short of whiskey. Uh -huh. First I heard of that. My customers don't pay what they owe me. I can't afford to buy any new stuff. I think you ought to do what I say. This here's uh, Joel Turner. Howdy. Do a favor and run the eights. Uh, I was born and raised in this part of Texas. I could take you blindfold, any nook or corner. Could you get 3,000 head of cattle through the dead mountains? Sure. What about Indians? There are not many up in the hills. They stopped us. Oh. Where'd you come up from? South. They must have tried Echo Pass. There are lots of others. Much better suited for driving cattle through. Fine. Job juice for the asking. I'm your man. Good. You ready to start out? As soon as I get my gear. We'll be right here. Dead mountains. Uh, we sure are, man. Uh, that's right, miss. My name is Barbara Frazier, and I came to Endicott yesterday on the stage. How do you do, ma'am? Your favor, Rowdy Yates. How do you do? Please take me with you. Now, I know that sounds strange, but my father's in there somewhere, and I've got to find him. We're taking a herd of cattle through. We wouldn't have time to be looking for anyone. But I just want to go along with you. I won't be any bother, really. I've hired a horse, and once we're in the mountains, you wouldn't have to worry about me. I'd like to help you, miss, but uh, there's just no place for you on a cattle drive. But I came all the way from the east, and I'll just do anything to find him. Well, boss, maybe we could go. <laughs> no, I'm afraid there's nothing we could do for you, ma'am. I'm sorry, Miss Frazier. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Boss, I ain't one to argue, but then you Then know, why are you going to? Well, you heard what she said. She's just looking for her long-lost father. That's her story. Huh? You know, Roddy, I'm beginning to believe half the population of these United States are trying to find a way into the Dead Mountains to find McKay's gold. Oh, but that isn't the case with her. I mean, she's just here after her father. You heard her say that. Like I said, that's her story. Oh. I don't know how you could displease such a sweet-looking little girl as that. No, practice. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. The only important thing is you're getting us where we want to go to. I'll show you a way to get your herd through the mountains.
glass I had in mind. Ah, good. More than wide enough for the cattle. It don't stay that wide all the way in. The going gets pretty rough for quite a while before we get to water. It seems like it always does. <laughs> That's that eastern girl, isn't it? Yeah. Pick up her horse, Turner. What happened? My horse stumbled. I fell off. Trying to ride straight up the side of a mountain isn't the smartest thing in the world to do. I didn't think it would be. What do you have in mind? Going into those mountains alone? I am going into these mountains. My father's in there, and I'm going to find him. Say, your father's name wouldn't be McKay by any chance, would it? McKay? Of course not. It's Frazier. Look, we're, we're going on in there. We can't let her just go on by herself. Why can't we take her with us? Thank you. Well, looks like my mind's been made up for me. Oh, well, boy, Look, you know... if I had a choice, I'd send you back to Endicott right now, with him. You think you can manage to sit your horse? Riding with them, we're riding after them. Plan's working out, Benning. Yeah, just like you planned. Yeah, well, let's go. We wouldn't want them to get lost. You know, traveling hasn't been too bad so far. We're past the worst part of it. I think we ought to be able to get our herd through here, don't you? Yeah, sure, I guess so. Well, come morning, Mr. Faber. We've got three or four more hours' ride before we get to water. Uh, fine. It was probably just a coyote or something. Well, it was just a mountain lion. You know, for somebody who scares easy, you sure get in some strange places. Oh, I... I just felt like being alone. Felt like remembering my father the way he was the last time I saw him. He was very tall. Almost as tall as you are. And very gentle. He was educated in Edinburgh and was teaching in Boston. He was a geologist and a mining engineer. Everyone said he had a brilliant career ahead of him. What happened to him? Well, he took me on an excursion one day. Left my mother alone in the cabin. And the lamp overturned and the cabin burned down. He started drinking very heavily after her death. I guess he felt guilty about leaving her alone. And then he gave up his teaching job and sent me to live with an aunt and uncle. And then he just disappeared. He went west. There were a few letters at first, but then none at all. 
What makes you think he's in Texas? Well, I got a letter from him two months ago. You mean he told you to come out here alone like this? Oh, no. He just wanted to know if I was happy and if everything was all right. But in it, he mentioned the dead mountains. And I found out where they are, and here I am. Did uh, he say what he was doing in the dead mountains? Well, he said that a man who had befriended him was using his training and knowledge. Sounds like it could be McKay. He didn't say. He could use his experience as a geologist, help him find the ore, and then as a mining engineer to help him get it out. Mr. Favor, you've just got to help me find him. Look, I've, I've got to get a herd through. You took me with you, and you didn't have to. Yeah, I know. Are you sorry for me? Let's say I made a mistake. Why are you so afraid of being human? The only thing I'm afraid of is not getting the job done that I'm paid to do. Perhaps I could pay you, too. I've already been hired. So I guess we'd better get back to camp. It was a wild and turbulent crossing. And the waves of the Atlantic Ocean were rising mountains high. While our little ship was being tossed about, like a, like a leaf on a waterfall. But did McKay get scared? Did McKay tremble? He most certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> and after riding many miles in an iron horse, here I am, home at last. And now I'm going to tell you something you really want to know. On my way back here, I stopped in at your village, and you'd be glad to learn everything's going along fine. I've had some plows shipped out from the east. They put 200 more acres under cultivation. It'll be about a week before your replacements come in, and then you can go back to your village. Mr. McKay? Yes, lad. When you were in our village, did you see my wife? Ah, I did indeed. What's more, I saw your son. A son. I am glad. Uh, of course you are. You want to laugh and dance and sing, don't you? Uh, you've a right to. It's a beautiful baby. There are white men camping in mountains tonight. But I wasn't a fallen in. No one's ever been able to do that. It is the two drovers and others. Another man and woman. Also, two riders who remain apart. I don't like the sound of it. We'll have to do something about it, Lance, won't we? Danny, we haven't got all day. We should be ready to move out the instant they do. Don't worry, we'll be ready. Ready for what? You men are a long ways from Endicott, aren't you? So are you. There ain't a bar in sight. I'm not leading you to McKay's gold. Of course she ain't. You're just showing that trail, boss. Uh, Pass through the mountains. That's right. So why worry about us? I'm not worried about you. 
I've got my story all ready. I found you following me. You tried to jump me. And I had to kill the pair of you. I don't think that's a very good idea. Do you, Jen? I sure don't. That's too bad. <laughs> Saddleback. Get it. I'll go in ahead. You cover me. What if they're Indians? We don't know what it is yet. Might be just Turner getting breakfast. Shot. Three holes, not an inch apart. Whoever it was couldn't have gone very far. They might as well be on the other side of the moon. It'll only take them a few seconds to disappear in this. So it'll only take a few seconds for someone to get lost, you mean? It's real enough, all right. What do we do now? We get out of these mountains as fast as we can, if we can. Backtracking on this rocky ground ain't gonna be no joy. Sun might be some help if we knew which way Turner took us, but we don't. Well, sitting around ain't gonna change things. Let's go. Keep on trying. Come on, Nada. What do you mean, keep on trying? We can do that forever. Oh, no. I forgot. We don't have any more water. How long is it before you die of thirst? You're not gonna die of thirst. Well, what am I gonna die of? Look, we got in here, so there must be a way out. We'll find it. The same way those other people did. The ones who came in here and never came out. Look, I don't know or care about them. Well, I do. I know what happened. The same thing that's going to happen to us. They just kept going round and round the way we've been doing, and every rock looked like every other rock, and they kept saying they'd find a way out, and they never did. Hey, boss. I think sure. He'll know a way out of here. What will that do us? It'll do us a lot of good if we can keep him in sight. Come on, mount up.
suppose he tries to lead us into a trap. You don't have to. We're already in one. Easy, Jim. There ain't any more where that come from. All that did was make me thirsty. I'm getting sick of these rocks. Maybe you better start to love them. They're likely to be the last thing you'll ever see. We only hadn't lost them drovers. They're likely in the same spot as we are. What are we supposed to do? Stand around here and die? It's been done. Tyree. What's he hanging around for? What are you whispering for? He can't hear you. I don't want him to go away. Well, why? That ain't. I got me an Indian. Now, that makes my day. That ain't smart. That's all I was going to say. I have done as you said. Fine. And now let's take a look at what flows down to us from the benevolent mountain, huh? You know, at first sight, a foolish man might think these were pebbles. <laughs> but we know better, don't we, my love? <laughs> and there's no end to the golden mountains. At least, not yet. We still keep following him? Yeah, he could have led us deeper into him if he'd wanted to. Maybe he's found a quicker way to get rid of us. Yeah, let's keep following him. That could be a mistake, boss. Yeah, but what's one more? Yeah. Each and every one of you. You came up here to seek for gold. I came up here looking for water and for grazing land. There's plenty of water and grazing land in the mountains, but not in the direction you were going. We hired a guide. Where is he? He was killed by your people. You're wrong. He was killed by that man and his partner, but he deserved it. He was not leading it to green pastures. We hired him in good faith. Faith means, um, it's a matter of belief, is it not? Why should I believe you? 
Either you do or you don't. That's a matter of fate for you to decide. You wouldn't be the first to come up to these mountains and never be heard of again. Our drovers will be up looking for us. What chance would they have of hiding this place? What do you think we're so interested in your gold for, anyway? We got 3,000 head of cattle on our hands. Yeah, I heard you say that, but I've never seen it. And this girl, why is she with you? Looking for her father. Oh. What's your name? Barbara Frazier. Was your father one of the men that came up to look for McKay's gold? The story she told us, he's a geologist and a mining engineer. His wife died, he drank up everything back east, so he came west. Last place he has heard from was the Dead Mountains. And who did the hearing? He's got a letter from her. A letter? Interesting. Where did your father get his education? Edinburgh. Oh, the girl's clever. She knows everything about the man she's talking of. Everything except one thing. And what's that? He didn't have a daughter. He's lying. Mr. Haver, I sincerely beg your pardon. I've been a misdoubt of being a murderer, but I'm afraid you've been misled by a pair of pretty eyes, among other things. You see, I'm the man she's talking about. Careful. Now get down there, all of you. There are other braves about, you know. They'll be back. You two get down here! Down here. Tyree, is this what we came out here for? If we're lucky, there'll be enough to get us back east. That ain't all the gold there is. You said there was more than a man could carry. There is. He's got it stashed someplace. Now, where do you keep the gold? We don't keep it. We spend it. You saw me kill once, and I'll kill again. I don't mind killing. Matter of fact, you might say I like it. Now, gold never did a dead man any good. So why don't you tell us where you've hidden it? And you might live to mine more. Well, uh, I'm a reasonable man. And there's a good deal of sense in what you say. But we have no thieves at the hill. We manage to keep them out, usually. So all we have to do with the gold is throw it under the sluices. Maybe he's lying. Yeah. You go down and get the gold. As you wish. I suppose you'll want all the gold there is. That's right. All of it. Say, McGate. Yes? Uh, you'll be needing a hand, won't you? Hey! The gold's awful heavy. Come along. <laughs> Much better looking when he's unconscious, isn't he? Thank you, young man. You'd better take him into the sheriff at Endicott. I think you'd better take her, too. I don't think they'll hang her like they will him. But it'll be some time before she gets out to look for a father that never was, and the gold that was never hers. We'll take her in. And when you return, my Indians will show you the finest pass through the mountains on the finest grazing lands. D don't worry. <laughs> you won't be anywhere near this place. <laughs> Go 
Smartest thing he ever seen, Joe. No trail drive should ought to be without one. No, but in honor. <laughs> You gentlemen would enjoy a can can more than a ballet, Mr. Beaver. Uh, well, they, they appreciate it all right, all right. See, uh, one thing bothers me, Mr. McKay. What may that be? All these stories about men going into the dead mountains and disappearing forever. There must be some truth to them. Yes. Possible some of them got lost. Others may have died of thirst or starvation, while others... My Indians are very loyal, Mr. Haver. <laughs> <laughs> 